Welcome to the third session on distributed mutual exclusion. So here we discuss a new algorithm that is Makawa's voting algorithm. So in the last session we have discussed about uh, an algorithm which was based on multicasting, right? So in that case, if a process want to enter into critical session, it should receive permission from all of its uh, peers. That is, it should receive n minus one replace to enter into critical session. And that was the major drawback there that it consumes a very good amount of bandwidth. So how to reduce this bandwidth consumption? So in 1985, Mekawa observed that in order for a process to enter a critical session, it is not necessary for all its peers to grant its access. Instead, processes need only obtain permission to enter from subsets of their peers as long as the subsets used by any two processes overlap. So we can think of a process as voting for one another to end the critical session. So any process which is a candidate should collect sufficient votes to enter. Okay. So processes in the intersection of two sets of voters ensure the safety property that is uh, at any time a process should cast its vote only for one candidate. Okay, so we can see what are the different properties of this algorithm and how it achieved this mutual exclusion. So Makawa associate a voting set VI with each process PI, where VI will be a subset of the set of all processes. So the voting set VI for a process PI is chosen so that for all IJ these conditions are met. PI will be element of VI. That means the process itself will be a member of its voting set. Then VI intersection VJ no, is not an empty set. That means if we take two different voting sets, that is if we take the voting sets of two different processes, there should be at least one common member of any two voting sets. And the length of this voting set is equal to k should be a fair number. Each process has a voting set of the same size. And all the voting sets will be of same size and we have to select a number that uh, length of the voting set should be a fair number. Okay, we can see later how the number will be selected. And also each process PJ is contained in M of the voting sets VI. So each process should be member of M different voting sets. So these are the main conditions to be met in a maker's voting algorithm. Now let us get into the algorithm. So this is the initialization part. For every process, two variables are kept. One is called state and the another one is called voted. So state will be released initially for every process and voted will be false. Okay. Now a process PI want to enter into critical session. What are the things to be done? So if a process PI want to enter into critical session, it will first change its state into wanted. Then it should get permission from all the processes which are members of its voting set, right? So VI is the voting set for this process PI. So this process PI will multicast request to all processes in VI. And it can enter into critical session only when all the members in this voting set are replayed. So wait until number of replays received is equal to k where k is the length of its voting set so it receive it should receive replays from all the members of its voting set once it receives all these replays it can now enter into critical session so change state into held once its state is changed into held it can now enter into critical session now let us take the case of uh, process which is a member of any voting set. So here we are, we are considering the process PJ which is a member of a 
the voting set of process PI. So PJ receives a request from PI. So what are the different steps to be followed? First, it will check whether the state of itself is held. That is, the PJ is already doing its critical station. Then definitely this uh, vote should not be casted for PI, right? Or the second criteria is that voted is equal to true. That means the process PJ has already casted its vote for some other process. Then also it should not uh, cast its vote for PI. So in these two conditions, this process will queue the request from PI without replying immediately. Or else, it don't have any problem in uh, granting permission for other process, right? So it will send a reply to PI. After sending a reply, that is after casting its vote to PI, it will change the voted value into true. This is each and every member of a voting set will do. Now the exit session. So for each process PI, when it finishes its execution in its critical session, the following part will be done. First, it will change the value state into released. And then it will inform all the processes in its voting set that it has finished the execution. For that, it will multicast a release message to all the processes in its voting set VI. Now, upon receiving a release message from PI, so all the members in the voting set of PI will receive a release message, right? And say for example, PJ is a member of uh, the voting set VI of PI. So what PJ will do? It will check whether any pending request is there, already some uh, request is uh, awaiting the reply. So it will check the corresponding queue and if the corresponding queue is not empty, remove one from the head of the queue, say PK. So first received request will be first voted. So we will remove the uh, process from the head of the queue and send a reply to process PK. After that, that is after casting vote to PK, change the state uh, or value of voted into true. Else, that means there is no awaiting process in the queue, then just change the state voted as false. This is how a process will respond when it receives a release message from a process PI. So this algorithm achieves safety property that is ME1. Let us check it out whether such a situation is there which violate the safety property. Say for example, suppose we have two different processes PI and PJ and they both enter the critical session at the same time. Let us check whether such a situation is there. Okay. So we have the voting set VI corresponding to PI and voting set VJ corresponding to PJ. And by definition of this algorithm, VI intersection VJ, that is the when we try to intersect both these voting sets, it should not be empty. By definition, there should be some common processes when we take any two voting sets. So here also some common elements will be there. And if both PI and PJ enter the critical session at the same time, that means some of the processes have voted for both, right? Both the PI and PJ. But the algorithm allows the process to make at most one vote right that we saw in the algorithm at, at most one vote can be casted by the process so definitely this won't allow two different processes to enter the critical session at the same time unfortunately this algorithm is deadlock prone just for example we have three different processes p1 p2 and p3 and uh, voting sets for p1 is P1, P2, voting set for P2, that is V2 is P2, P3 and voting set for P3, that is V3 is equal to P1 and P3. Now let us go through a situation which creates a deadlock. Suppose all the three processes want to enter into critical session, all the three request for critical session and uh, there can be a situation that P1 respond to itself and hold off P2 like that P2 
replies to itself and uh, hold of p3 and p3 replies to itself and hold of p1 so each the... process have received one out of two replies so and uh, none can proceed right so this is a deadlock situation this can be avoided by modifying the protocol used that uh, processes queue outstanding request in happen before order that means a process can respond to a request only in the happen before order in that case uh, such a cycle will not be dropped so we can uh, avoid such deadlock using the modified version of protocol based on this happen before order for example in our case suppose uh, for uh, process p3 two requests are there from one from itself that is one from p3 itself and one from p1 and it cannot uh, respond to p3 before p1 if p1 arrives first like that such a protocol is applicable to all the processes so we can avoid said deadlock, deadlock situation here somehow one of the process can enter into critical session how to choose k where k is the number of elements in a voting set of any process so to get an optimal solution we have to minimize k at the same time which allows the process to achieve mutual exclusion and the experimental results show that k can be chosen as square root of n where n is the number of processes so usually every process the voting set will contain k different elements where k is square root of n now how to choose the voting set of any process that is definitely a non trivial uh, problem to calculate the optimal set ri for any or vi for any process so usually what we'll do is place the processes in a square matrix of size square root of n by square root of n and let vi be the union of the row and column containing pi so for every process using this matrix we can create the voting set by taking the appropriate row and column in which the corresponding process belongs now if we analyze the performance of this algorithm the bandwidth utilization is 2 in the square root of n messages per entry to the critical session so for example uh, if a process want to enter into critical session it will request all the members of the voting set right so k messages k is square root of n so k messages for request and all these members should reply so another k messages another square root of n so two times square root of n messages will be required for entry into critical session and after finishing the critical session this process will send release message to all the members of the critical session so again a square root of n messages so totally 3k messages so 3 into square root of n messages will be required for entry and exit together so bandwidth utilization is 3 square root whereas the bandwidth utilization in case of uh, that rickard and agravalas algorithm it was 2 times n minus 1 messages so this algorithm that is uh, mekavas algorithm is definitely better than this uh, rickard and agravalas algorithm in terms of bandwidth utilization provided n is greater than 4 now what about the client delay the client delay is the time incurred by a process to enter into critical session right so here also it is a round trip time to enter into a request and a reply from different members right so a round trip time which is same as that of the previous algorithm rickard and agravalas algorithm and what about the synchronization delay as you know the synchronization delay is the time gap between one process exiting its critical session and the next one entering into critical session right so here one process when finish its execution it will send a release message to all the members in the voting set right and upon receiving this release message the members in the voting set will check the queue and find out any pending request that there and send a vote cast a vote right so a round trip time will be there between one exiting and another one entering into critical session whereas it was just one message in the case of uh, rickard and agravalas algorithm so here it is worse 
anyway this algorithm is better in terms of bandwidth utilization so this is all about uh, different types of distributed mutual exclusion algorithms in the next session we can see different election algorithms thank you